Hello students and welcome to this video for Excel chapter 2 hands-on exercise number 2. Um, it is on page 503 in your textbook. We're going to talk through a couple things again here um, at the beginning of the exercise because this is completely new um, for us in Excel. So I'm flipping back here a couple pages actually to function basics. So we know a formula, what that is. It's basically a mathematical equation calculating something for us. An Excel function is a predefined computation that simplifies creating a formula that performs a complex calculation. So a formula, does, or excuse me, a function does involve a formula, but it's already kind of been pre-programmed for us. So it makes it easier here. And so there's some functions here that we're going to look at um, in it. So, um, and of course a function um, here Arguments specify inputs such as cells, values, and arithmetic expressions. This is on page 495, um, but we're just going to briefly go through some of the other things here. Formula autocomplete displays a list of functions and pre or excuse me, define names that match letters as you type a formula. So when we go into type in it in here a little bit, it will have an autocomplete option for us. Okay, there's also the screen tip that can help. You can also search for it, and we're going to do that. We do an insert function. Um, and we can do that uh, here. And then, of course, it's dealing with uh, multiple cells that we select ourselves. Um, and there's a few basic math ones. Of course, we have sum, and we've used that before with tables in Microsoft Word. The sum function, which is adding up um, the cells that you're referring to. Then we also have the average one, which is, of course, um, you are finding the average for the cells in that range. The median function, of course, finds a midpoint value. So there's that one we're going to use too. And then there's the minimum function and, of course, the max function. Um, these are a lot of things that you use in math already. So I'm not going to explain them too far in depth. We'll see this in the exercise. And then, of course, Excel provides three basic count functions. So count, count blank, and count A to count the cells in a range that meet a particular criterion. So the count function tallies the number of cells in a range that contain values you can use in calculations. Um, and of course, there's count blank, um, which tallies how many are blank. And then count A tallies the number of cells in a range that are not blank. So they actually have something in it. Um, there's date functions as well um, and other things too. Um, so those are just a brief overview here before we get going with it. So we're on page 503. We're using the functions here, learning the basics. Uh, step A, it says I need to save this file with a new name. So file, save as, I'm clicking browse. And of course, the only change I have to make, and if you saved it to the right folder the first time, you won't have to change it, is I'm just doing Excel chapter two, hands-on exercise two. I'm changing that one number. And I'm gonna save it. Then it says step B, ensure that the details worksheet is active, which it is. And it says click cell B16. So it looks like it's this one right here, yep. Right under house cost, B16. And then it says click auto sum in the editing group of the home tab. Now the editing group is over here, far right, and it says to click auto sum right here. When we do that, You'll notice it tries to select a range. So here's my active range right here that it thinks I want. And we're actually going to select something different. It says select B8 through B12. So I'm just doing B8. So house cost B8 through B12. So you can see it here. And then I'm going to click enter up here at the top. And of course, you can see now it contains the total for house cost. That says step F, save the workbook. All right, step two, we're going to use the average function. It says click, uh, step A, click the formulas tab. So I'm going to do that, formulas tab up here. It says click cell B17. So I'm going down to B17. I was on B16, now B17. And it says click the auto sum arrow in the function library group. So up here, function library group, all these wonderful things. Clicking the auto sum arrow, and it says to choose average. So right here, average. I click on that, and you'll notice it 
selects a range for me. We are going to select our own though. It says B8 through B12. So I'm going to go right up here to house cost again, click and hold down, drag it down like this. So B8 through B12. So house cost, um, I'm selecting there. Then it says press enter, making cell B18 the active cell. And of course, we see 304,240. All right, we're saving that. We're on step E here. I'm moving through this quickly. And you're going to use the median function. So, median function. This is page 505. It says ensure that the cell B18 is the active cell. So, on B17, I'm going to push enter, go to B18. And then it says click the insert function between the name box and the formula bar in the function library group. So right here is insert function. It's right under file for me. And then it shows here, um, we're gonna search for a function. So it says type a brief description of what you want to do and then click go. So I'm gonna type in median and I'm gonna click go. And you're gonna see here in the box below it's going to look for what it thinks is the correct thing. Now, my computer um, is having a little hiccup there. There we go. Uh, median comes up for me right away at the top. It says read the median function description. So median returns a median or the number in the middle of the set of given numbers. So that's what we want. Now we're going to click OK. If I can actually click it. <laughs> Then it says, uh, step D, click the collapse dialog box to the right of the number one box. So the collapse dialog box. Next to the right of the number one box. Now looking at it. Oh, let me try this again here, I think. There we go. Um, I have to click on insert function again. So I did choose median, but I had to click up here. And now when it says the click the collapse box over here, it looks like, um, it, mine's a little different. It has that up and down arrow now. It looks different in the book. And it says select B8 through B12. So I'm gonna go there again, house cost, B8 through B12. You can see it's showing up here. And of course, I have my collapse dialog box button. And I'm going to click the, excuse me, expand. So it might look a little bit different for yours. It did for me. And you can see it's there in the number one thing. And then it says click, this is step F on the next page, click OK to accept the function arguments. So it's showing this info. I click OK. And now it put in the proper number for me. All right, and then step G, save your workbook. All right, step four. Step A, click cell B19. So I'm gonna push enter for that. Then it says click the auto sum arrow. Select min. And select the range B8 through B12. So you can see we're dealing with house cost. B8 through B12, and then press enter. You can see here, it finds a minimum, which is 175,500. Then it says, click cell B20. I push enter on the keyboard, so I don't have to do that. Click the auto sum arrow up here in the function library. And then uh, we are choosing max. And we're selecting the range B8 through B12, so we've done this a lot already. Then step D, it says click B21. I'm already there because I pushed enter. And type in, so I gotta type it in. I'm gonna do it like this. Equals count B8 colon B12. Now when we do a colon, it means through. So B8 through B12, and then press enter. Now as you type the letter C, the list is probably gonna come up. I just typed it quickly in. 
you could select it though from that. And it says select range B16 through B21. So we've been, we're gonna select this one here, B16 through B21. Step F, it says click, uh, excuse me, drag the fill handle to the right by two columns. So I'm gonna grab the fill handle, move it over two columns to copy this range. So I move it over, one, two, I let go. You can see it filled in. That says click cell D21. I'm assuming, all right, it's this one right here, it's uh, D21. And it says, because you use relative cell references, the range of the function changes from um, B8 to B12. And so you can see that up here, D8 to D12, which is correct. And that says step G, click cell B9. Cell B9, which is right here. And change the cell value to 425000. And I'm gonna push enter. So you can see it looks like that. And I'm going to save the workbook. And then moving on to step number five here, use the, the today function. So you also have functions that involve dates. I did briefly mention that. Um, but we are going to continue here. Now mine's a little bit, I'm going to expand this column just a little bit. Sometimes when you have things zoomed in, zoomed out, which mine zoomed in a little bit, um, it may mess with it being visible. So I had to adjust it, and that's fine. Step A says click cell B4. So B4, I'm assuming it's up here, and that looks correct. Then it says click date and time in the functions library group. So here's my functions library. I choose date and time. And then it says select today. So I'm going to go down to the T section and choose today. And then it says to click OK. And right here is today's date. Then step C, it says click the format arrow in the cells group. So format arrow in the cells group. So I'm assuming we are on the home tab now. I click on format in the cells group and I choose auto fit column width. And it just did that. All right, I'm gonna save my workbook. Uh, again, with zooming in and out, it does adjust um, this right here. So make sure yours are visible. It should be at 100%. Um, mine, I'm gonna leave because of the facts for the video so you can see it. Um, and those were the different functions and you're gonna be using more of them. So make sure you're paying attention for how to do that. And of course, this is how you complete Excel, chapter two, hands-on exercise number two.